Hi, welcome to the Partner Business Technical Support Team. My name's Phil, and I'll be giving you a brief introduction as to how you go about uh, fault finding some standalone sensors. What I'd like to take you through now is just the sensor's typical operation. I find that it's important to reinforce this before we start doing any fault finding. So what we've got on this first slide is a single sensor, three wire sensor being connected to a load. Now, with a sensor, there are two, oh, with this particular type of sensor, there are two type of, there are two dials. You've got a light lux level setting as well as a, a you know, duration or a time setting. Now what we're going to be looking at right now is the light level setting. So currently it's set to a thousand lux. Now what's popped up on this particular slide here is we've got an ambient light level. So this is the light, let's just say of the room or the environment in which this uh, sensor is actually installed of 200 lux. Now, if movement is detected within the field of detection, what happens is the sensor basically asks two questions. Is the, in this particular case, the ambient light, which is 200 lux, less than 1000 lux, which is that predetermined uh, pre uh, light level setting on that uh, pot? In this case, it is. And is motion being detected? If both of these conditions are true, what will happen is the light will switch on, or the contacts within the uh, sensor will close and the light switches on. Now let's just take the same scenario, but let's just, for this particular uh, scenario, just increase the ambient light level. In this particular scenario, the lux level is set to 1000. The ambient light is at 1500 lux. The sensor within its field of detection detects movement. And if we look at that same sort of formula we looked at before, the same logic, so is the ambient light less than a thousand lux? And in this particular case, it's actually greater. So we say no. And is motion being detected? Yes. Now in this particular case, what happens is nothing. The sensor has detected that there is sufficient light within that area and it's not going to turn on that light. So the light remains off. Within this diagram, we've got four sensors all connected to a single load. So what happens is that it, because these sensors are connected in parallel, now it's really important that this configuration is only possible. You can't have a series, you can't have these sensors connected in series because you won't get the operation that you may be intending with a sort of a more of an AND type logic setup. In this particular case, if any of these sensors are closed, the light will be on. If none of the sensors are detecting movement and have their timers engaged, the light will be off. If by chance we have incorrectly programmed one of the sensors or one of the sensors have gone faulty, what you could potentially see is that light being, being sort of kept on uh, indefinitely. If you're experiencing some issues on site, some of the common, uh, more common issue, uh, causes that we've come across are the following. Incorrect light level settings uh, programmed into the sensor. Possibly sensor positioning might be causing some problems. Incorrect wiring, so that could be open, uh, open circuits. As well as connecting uh, multiple sensors which are all controlling the one load to uh, separate phases. Uh, potentially you might have just a faulty sensor. And finally, uh, which is probably not as common only because diagnosing it is relatively easy, is incorrect time settings. The best way of fault finding multiple circuits if you suspect it's incorrect programming is by removing all of the sensors but leaving one. Program that sensor up as you normally would and test the functionality. Now, s some of the Clipsal sensors actually have a removable sensor head which allows for testing this to be relatively easy. When you test it make sure you do a day test as well as a night test. So day test, um, once you've programmed it move around underneath it what you should find is that the sensor shouldn't turn the light on. Now night mode you can either come back that night 
or in by if you have the facilities and means to do it cover the sensor head wait for it to time out because you'll probably find that the light will come on because it's a that that is a normal function that when it comes when it goes into what's known as night um, it will turn the lights on for a predetermined amount of time after such period wait till it times out then while keeping that cover, so keeping the sensor in darkness, try to trigger that light off um, by, by whatever means you have, have available. Otherwise, if you can't do that, the only, only alternative is to come back that night when it's dark and test it out then. What you need to do after that is basically, and this is only once you've confirmed the operation of the first sensor, then connect up a second sensor and go through the same process. And what you should find is, as you keep on going through adding sensors, you know that every sensor you've added before should be working 100% correctly. The alternative to this is to reduce the LUX level settings to two LUX to all the sensors and then again program one of the sensors up as you'd expect however what you might find is if you have a faulty sensor uh, one faulty sensor amongst that whole batch of parallel sensors you might find that it may not operate as until you may not be able to test it uh, as efficiently as you'd like to because that one sensor could be causing that light to remain on indefinitely another thing to take in consideration when installing these sensors is the sensor positioning. There's this, misconce oh, there's this misconception that if you install sensors outside, they're all gonna have the same LUX level. Now, that's not necessarily the case because if you've installed these sensors where it's going to be exposed to sunlight, you're going to have to set those particular sensors at a higher target LUX level than those areas that aren't exposed to the sun or maybe sheltered from the sun a bit more. Another thing you need to take into consideration is that you know where say let's just say for example the sun's shining through a window it basically lights up a particular area of the sensor that particular area could could uh, basically reflect more sun or more light into the actual sensor and as a result could cause the sensor not to work as as per expected um, and, there, and in this particular case where you've got certain beams of light coming through windows, doors, opening and the like, you might find that the sensor doesn't operate uh, during certain parts of the day. So it could just be a case of throwing a mat down or something like that to reduce the amount of glare coming from, let's just say for example, a polished floor. Now also take in consideration the movement of the sun because as the sun moves across the, uh, across the sky, obviously it's gonna start um, spraying light down on the floor in a different, uh, different location. Something else you need to take in consideration when positioning sensors is how you go about positioning sensors, say sensors that are paralleled, controlling the same load where the load is influencing the field of detection for both of those sensors. In this particular example, what I have are two sensors, obviously controlling a single load, and that load is in the area of the field of detection for both of those sensors. If I move into one of those areas, what you'd expect to happen is because there's not enough light, our sensor, and in this, in this particular scenario, both sensors are set to a thousand lux. Because there is insufficient light and the sensor has detected movement, it turns the light on and starts its own internal timer. Now what happens is any movement detected by that second sensor, because it's reading, let's just say for this example with that light turned on 1,500 lux, it thinks that there's sufficient light and it's going to disregard any movement. Now that basically means that if you walk into that second area, it's not going to be taken into consideration. That's something else just to watch out for. Now that second sensor will start to operate as per normal when all the light has turned off and that sensor is measuring anything less than a thousand lux. Now if you want that sort of functionality, what you're looking for is an automation system 
and one such automation system is the Clipsal CBUS system. Now for sites that may have multiple sensors connecting to a single load that are connected to separate phases, what you might find is the following and the wiring, wiring these sensors to a single load on separate phases is not recommended by Clipsal. So again in this scenario, multiple sensors, single load, separate phases. What, ha what, would you, what you'd expect to happen is that if one of those sensors detects movement, it will close its contacts, it will supply a load to the, to the light, which then obviously turns the light on. Now, if both of those sensors are closed, so they both detect movement, what would happen is you'll get a direct short across two phases, and that would obviously, you know, trip the circuit breaker, damage the units, could potentially weld those contacts together. Like I said, this particular wiring is not recommended by Clipsal, and it will void your warranty if you do wire these sensors up this, in this particular fashion. So that concludes this video. For any more information in relation to fault finding these particular sensors or any other uh, Clipsal sensor, or how you go about in, uh, installing these sensors, please feel free to get in contact with the Partner Business Technical Support Team. My recommendations are get, in, get a hold of your local Clipsal representative and they'll put you in touch with your local technical support team. Just want to say thank you for watching and all the best for your endeavours with these sensors.